Hello and uh, welcome to our latest session and today we are going to have a go at uh, making some giraffes. So just to get started um, I've been messing around with the pattern and I've uh, made a maquette which I've got here. I don't think the camera's in quite the right place here. Let's see if we can adjust it. There we go, a bit better. So we've got the uh, maquette of what we do intend to make here. Hey, I've got comments. I can see you all again. Excellent. So this is what we're going to try to do, only on a bigger scale. And also what I did last night is I got a good old sketchbook out and um, I did some drawings of uh, giraffes and different um, big giraffes, little giraffes, but also because I was having such a problem with getting the head right, I also had a go at drawing the skull. And that's actually I found really helpful to understand what goes on underneath because giraffes have really peculiar heads. So I'm going to put that back over here and we're going to go on, get on with this. Take him off there for a moment. Now I discovered when I did the maquette, again really good idea to have done the maquette for this, um, because it is very much a question of balance to get this right. We've got to get that baby's head right and it's got to be thick enough and strong enough um, and we've got to get the mother's head right and we've got to get it positioned so it's not pushing down too much on the baby's head. Okay, so let's get on with it, as Katie can only stay to one. I don't think I can really... <sighs> take too long about this. So, I mean, thinking about it, I'm thinking the best way I can deal with this is actually to do it as a coil build. Again, I want to make it bigger. I'm sort of thinking big for me is as big as that. I don't ever get much bigger than that, but I'll try today. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by making some coils and making basically a couple of tubes. About the size that I want for the mother's neck. Maybe about that sort of size. Get some slip. And knock up very quickly. Basically a pipe. And by doing it with coils it should make it reasonably strong and not so likely to collapse. But I might end up packing it with a bit of newspaper anyway, just to be on the safe side. Always start with bigger coils at the bottom, smaller coils further up. We do need this to be strong enough. Banding wheel I've got here, unfortunately, has got bearings on it that are far too good and it doesn't want to stay still. I bought three of these banding wheels when I first set up because they were cheap, about half the price of a normal banding wheel, but they do have this tendency to go off on their own when you're using them. Yeah, and that's, Katie, that's sort of what I'm thinking, that if I can make a shape to start with that's quite sort of heart-shaped, I'll be on the right track. I'm not worried about the end being straight as it were I can build this coil up as a spiral my finger in there smooth it down remember when you're making coils you don't want to pinch them you don't want it to get any wider you're just joining the coils together by stroking across this isn't the finished height but by doing it like this in stages it holds it together see where you are as well. Okay. On to the next bit. Let's 
slip on that so it's dry. I'm building it more or less straight up because I'm planning to, to shape it a little bit and hopefully I've got enough thickness in the clay that I can but there will come a point about now where I'm actually going to start to do a little bit of a curve on the neck slip on that yep I've managed to get back to the studio the trouble is remembering where everything is that's part of the problem at the moment getting over here and finding that I've left stuff behind and yeah, vice versa I had to nip back home again this morning when I realised that I'd left the sketchbook and my lunch behind. It's certainly much cooler in the studio now but we're firing the kiln, one of the kilns tonight so making the most of the slightly cooler weather. Take my biscuit load on. which includes Katie's hair, I have to say. It's been sitting there drying because it's been just a little bit too tall to get in most of the firings, but it is going in tonight. Okay, so I'm starting to put a little bit of a curve in there on the neck. And then referring back, as always, referring back to the maquette. Katie, his ear is still attached. Your unicorn came out in one piece too. So some interesting facts you may or may know, may not, may not know. Yes, there will be a base, Katie. <laughs> uh, facts you may or may not know about giraffes. Baby giraffes are born while the mother's standing up. It's about a six foot drop for the baby. When they're first born, if they don't get up straight away, the mother gives them a damn good kick to make them get up. And then they get another one until they actually get back on their feet because they are very prone, baby giraffes are very prone to being taken by lions. Another fact you may or may not know is they don't have horns. The protuberances on the top of their head are actually called ossicots, sorry ossicones. And, um, they're actually, when they're born, they are cartilage and they're not attached to the skull, which means that the baby can come out without catching the mother with anything on the top of his head, to which I'm sure the mother is very pleased about. And then as the baby grows, they attach themselves to the skull, these lumps of cartilage, and as the giraffe reaches maturity, they develop into bone. A bit different from normal horns or antlers. Okay, right, so we've got one there, about the right shape and form for the mother's neck. So now for baby's neck. <laughs> Off the internet mainly, Katie, but I've also always had a fascination for 
animals generally. But, uh, I think one of the first facts that I learned about giraffes that I still think is absolutely amazing is that the number of bones they have in their necks is exactly the same number as we have. I think it's about eight, eight vertebrae in their neck, in the whole neck. Only each vertebrae can be about that long. One of the programs that I love watching, and which actually I lived when I lived over here at the studio. I don't live here anymore. My daughter now lives here with our cats. When I used to live here, our cat used to love watching with me. Was um, Secret Life of the Zoo, and um, they had giraffes on there. And it was amazing watching a mother giraffe give birth. set up all these hidden cameras in different places around the zoo. The cat used to sit and watch it with absolute fascination. Although I have to say he, he was rather taken with the meerkats. That was his favourite bit. So, so going with that heart shape, so now I'm Aiming to now bring the baby's head in in a little bit where the, one that, the baby's head actually is getting almost neck is almost as big as the mum's, so I'm just going to stretch it out a little bit. Okay, so let's see what we do. So her head is going to be there, the baby's head's going to be there, so just a little bit longer for the baby's head. Yep, there's a gay, huh? There's a fact I didn't know. a little bit more of a point now. Oh, it's going to go with the top of the head. Yep. Careful, I'm not pushing it in too much. Make sure I've got a curve on there. Not so much of a curve for the baby. That's for mum. So it's impossible for me to make big things. This is as big as I get. All right, so that's about right. So now let's work on the base to fix this onto. The base becomes critical. I mean, you could do it as two separate pieces and, um, you know, just have them freestanding like that. But I'm going to... Uh, bit of a base. So I'm just flattening out a piece of clay. I'm making it slightly dish shaped. That's going to be the underside. Smooth it off. Don't want a rough bottom. So what I want as well is I want a bit of a, a sweep, which is what we've got here. Um, so it's coming round in a curve. So I'm just going to very carefully shape the bottom of this. I don't want to tear it, and of course I'm going to be stretching it on one side, so I don't want to damage the clay. So it's going to come like that and come up in a heart like that. I'm going to take baby out of the way just for a moment, because what I now want to do is I'm going to build up with coils to build up that base. I'm going to put baby out of the way because I have a terrible habit when I'm doing something like this 
of grabbing the first lump of clay I see. Uh, yeah, giraffes and Brussels sprouts, that, the mind boggles. Um, yes, I have a tendency to grab the first lump of clay I see and before now it's been quite known for me to um, grab the piece of clay which I've just moulded into something and use it by accident. So I'm going to build this up here. I'm going to use a little bit of slip. This isn't sticking very well, this clay today. I wouldn't normally worry too much with coils about slip, but today the clay just doesn't seem to want to bind very well. I think it's, although it's gone damper, I think it's still quite dry overall. So I'm going to build that up now, smooth it in. get that sweep. Bring it around here. It looks vaguely obscene at the moment, so hopefully we're going to get this right. And we also need to make sure we've got a fairly good lump of clay here on this part here because that's going to counter the weight of the head. So if I left it like this, what's going to happen is the whole thing is going to slowly start to collapse like that. So I need to counter that with a good bit of clay in there. Again, this is what I discovered from doing the maquette. Me and the maquette had a bit of, bit of fun and games to keep the, the mother's head up. As you can imagine with this being a single coil of clay, but, um, it wasn't very happy about it. And in fact, the only way I could get it to stay like this eventually, apart from adding in quite a bit of clay at the back there, was to actually put the heat gun on it and uh, dry it off so it was strong enough. So I'm going to build that up here, smooth it in. There are nine recognised subspecies of giraffe in the world. Another useless fact for you. Each species has slightly different patterning. I believe the Rothschild giraffe has the most prettiest. But the Maasai giraffe has sort of like star shape pieces of uh, patterning. Whereas the northern and southern giraffes have more even shapes to their spots. Okay, so where's the? There we go. I'd lost the baby then. Right. So now I'm going to attach the baby, and he's he's curling in from the other way. So I need to do a similar sort of thing. Make sure I've got him going in the right direction there, and I'm going to bring him in. Here. Hopefully you can see, I don't know where I've got the camera in quite the right place here, uh, and build that up there. Uh, I'll just scrape this up a little bit onto that. This looks like at the moment some very weird modern sculpture. You could probably put it in the Tate, call it unfinished giraffe. When I've done giraffes in the past, I make it sound like I've done lots of them. Uh, I've done little giraffes in the past. Um, they work quite well as oxided. They didn't want to really get into glazing them. If you use a fairly light coloured clay, then you don't have to worry about the patches in between. And then just you just paint the patches with something like ruttle, oxide or magnesium. Sorry, manganese, completely different chemical. Um, 
and um, they come out quite well. Okay, right, so I have a baby's neck attached, I have a mummy's neck attached, now for the tricky bit, let's do a head. So, first of all, as always, trying to get the head the right size. Best to start with the baby's head here, because the mother's head, of course, is going to come over the top. Let's back a bit this way so you can see. Mother's head's going to go over the top, so you're not really going to be able to work on baby's head once mother's head's in place. So, we're going to do babies first. So first of all, <laughs> yeah, we believe you, Katie. Millions wouldn't. So first of all, find out we've got the right size piece of clay. So I'm going to just very roughly, very, very roughly mould the head. And because, again, it's difficult to tell, I'm going to make a very loose set of ears. Again, these aren't the final ears. This is just to give me some idea as to whether this is about the right sort of size what I have in mind. So it's, I think that's probably not too bad. Okay. The baby. Okay, so now let's make that into a proper head. I'm out of the way for a minute. So, from side on, going back to my original drawing over here, the head is actually quite sort of pointed, almost like a triangle. sort of shape to start with. Same on the other side. Okay, so it's more or less the right shape on both sides. And just the working out with my fingers just to get it into that sort of right sort of shape. And then the nose is a bit sort of droopy like that. Okay. Then up the centre of the head, and this is more noticeable on the skull, which is why it's so useful to look at the skull, but down the middle of the skull here they actually have like a ridge of bone that comes down the, down the front of the skull there. And then that ridge is quite um, pronounced and falls away. Um, and you notice how thin the skull is here over the nose. Um, and that, of course, we have to then all bring in to get our giraffe looking right. The area sort of here, forward forward of that point, so that's the skull ends about there on that picture. And what you've actually got is just this sort of slither of bone which comes down to here. All of this part up to here is actually just loose flesh. And that means that when we're actually shaping it, there is actually here, underneath where this bone is, the, skull, the, the whole face curves in. So, bearing all that in mind, get a baby, find, work out which way up baby is, right? So we need that strip then up the centre of the nose. So I'm just going to shape the skull in to give us sort of a, a point, or shape the head in, to give us sort of a ridge running up the middle of it. Okay, like that. And that then gives them sort of almost quite a sort of flat top to the head. Okay, and then the face goes in underneath that bone there. Like that. Okay, and repeat on the other side. Now I'm just going to shape the front of the mouth there. Like that elongated a bit. Okay. Then at the top here, the, the brow across here is actually quite thick. So once we get to the top of there, um, and we actually have uh, quite a slope, you can see it on that picture, coming out to the eye socket. So the eye socket is actually tucked in, the whole face falls away at that sort of angle underneath the, the brow. So let's get the brow on. Let's have a look at him. Make sure I've got him the right way up. Yep, that's better. Okay. And I'm going to add a bit more clay to build up an eye socket here. Mark 
Okay, have a good afternoon, Kate. Right, so I'll put a nice fill that up there. So it falls away. Like that. I need to add a little bit more to that in a minute. A bit more of a socket over the other side. like that and the eye is going to fit in under that the worst thing about this is because you've got to do this twice so you've got to get it right two times Side of the face there, it falls in, it comes like that. Okay. Right, let's have a look. So, I'm thinking we should be able to get an eye in, and the eye should be about there. horrible feeling this might have got a bit big during all that working and I think it might have let's just stick the ears back on again get a feel for it and I think I might have got this this head might have got bigger and bigger as I've gone I might have, this might end up being mum's head but anyway to really tell is to attach a pair of ears to it let's have a look at it yeah I think that might be mum <laughs> let's have a look that might be Too big for baby and a bit too small for mum, I think. Definitely too big for baby. So that's going to be mum in due course. So let's do that all over again, but on a smaller scale, a lot smaller lump of clay. But I don't want to lose what I've done, all that work, to get to that point. I should be able to do this one a little faster this time. too small now. Let's see how's that going. A bit more for the eye socket. Work it in. Right. That's a little now. Okay, that's a bit too small. It's going to be one of those days. I just don't see if I get a head the right size. I mean, yeah. Try again. You might find it easier to do this the other way around. So get the head done first, or get the heads done first. And then build the neck up to the right size for the head, rather than trying to do it the other way around. Groove down the middle of the skull. Get the eyes in the right place. triangle. By the time I've finished this I'm sure I'm going to be able to make these heads in my sleep. That's better. That's not the size I want. Okay. Well 
one of the things I do fancy having a go at is that first picture that I put up, the one with the just the head and the neck of the mother giraffe coming down to the baby. I was discussing it with my daughter this morning. She feels that the best way to do it might be actually to do it as a wall piece rather than a, a freestanding sculpture. So that the head of the mother giraffe comes out um, and you have like half a baby coming out the wall as it were. So if I end up with a lot of giraffe heads, I know what I'm going to do with them. Right. Now, you can cheat with the baby, of course, you could, don't have to have the eyes open. Because it's a baby, he's just been born, I'm sure he's got his eyes shut, going, what am I doing here? So, we could just have a little... Some pair of shut eyes, I'll just put them in for the moment, might alter that later. Uh, right, now I'm going to give him his ears. Well, I will once he's on the attached to the neck. So, I'm going back to my base piece here. Just bring it round in the right shape. Again, make sure I'm happy with that. So, I want his head. I'm assuming it's a boy, of course. It might not be. I was thinking of the head sort of like that. And mum's head's going to be sort of like that. So, that's about the right position. So, let's attach that. So, plenty of scrape, plenty of stick stuff, and let's attach the head, like that. Let's build that up. Yep, I nearly squashed the head then. Let's see my bugger for doing that. You see what I mean about this banding wheel? <laughs> if you uh, blink for a minute, you suddenly find that the piece you're working on is completely rotated. Fill this back in. Don't forget, of course, I now have a, air, I have a load of air trapped in there, so I'm going to have to make sure I put a hole in somewhere. And if you wanted to make it bigger than this, you might need to, say, put something in there to support it. Uh, a piece of cardboard, some newspaper, something like that. Something that will burn out is probably the best, rather than using, say, a wire armature, which you then have to remove at some point. Baby's head like that. There'll be a lot of smoothing and working is going to go on with this before it's finished, and I'm happy with it. Just making his neck a little bit more even. Right, let's put his ears on. Because he's a baby, he's gonna have a nice big, nice big ears. I don't know about the giraffes getting giddy, but it certainly gets me dizzy. I could change it. I do have better banding wheels than this in here. I've got about seven wheels in here. I could have chosen a better one, but this one is slightly lower than some of them, so. I thought this would be better, and now I'm beginning to wonder. Uh, no, at the moment, it's completely solid. It will be. I'll open it up at the bottom when I'm done, as long as I remember to do it. Right, so remember, make your ears together, about the same size. Right. Baby giraffes, particularly, tend to have their ears sticking out a bit like a cow, either side of their head. In fact, the more you look at them, the more you see there's sort of quite a lot of similarities between a giraffe and a cow. Face on, they do look very cow-like, actually. Right, so let's get that ear in. On there. But they also have a lot of similarities with camels. And in fact, their Latin name for a camel can be translated as um, a camel leopard. Leopard, obviously, for their colouring camel because of their sort of similar sort of shape to a, a camel in lots of ways. The head that is, and obviously not the body. Okay, it's a bit sheep-like actually at the moment, not about a camel. When they're newborn of course they don't have their uh, ossicones. 
they're still loose. They are there, but they're under the skull, um, lying flat against the skull. So I could put them in. But, and I might give him some anyway. I might make out this is not a newborn in a minute, because he's quite big in comparison to his mum. So, so I've got baby on there. So I'll do a bit of work there on getting the skull right for there. So let's have that other head. Let's have a look at that. So yeah, the, <laughs> compared to the baby's head, she's not she's not a lot bigger. So I think I'm gonna have to make that head bigger again in order to get the balance right. And if I hold it against the neck there you can see it's far too small. So more clay required. This is about to get squished. Now this head, because it's going to be so much bigger, it's reached that point where it's going to have to have a hole pushed up into it, otherwise it's going to be impossible to come back here. Imp impossible to fire. Right, let's have a look. Better, but I still think I want that bigger. In. That's more like it. That's more the scale I want, I think, to go with the thickness of the neck. So let's make this into a giraffe head. Something approaching it. Nose. Right. No, that's it. I've had enough. Time to change banding wheel. up of him coming around. Hopefully you can see that just as well. Might be able to see it better on the bigger banding wheel. Okay, now I'm going to put a hole in the bottom of this, just push it in. Make sure that it's got a chance to dry out thoroughly. And now this one I'm actually going to attach before I add a lot of the detail because, well, just because I can. And gently, uh, gently kissing the top of his head like that. It's perfect. Okay, so, get some slip on it. Put the head in position. And now, around the back here, I have a very big hole. So, what I'm going to need to do now is get some clay, get some coils. I'm just going to build that up. the head down because that way I can actually get at it better. Let's smooth it in like that. Just on the one side. Let's have another look. Get the head to be there. There's quite a bit of building up needed here so I'm just going to have to change the shape of the neck a little bit as well to get that in. I'm not sure I'm going to get the heart shape I had in mind but I'm hoping to get quite a nice sort of curve in it which will be quite attractive. So I've got this very big hole on this side, so I need to fill that in. My favourite tool into play. Let's move it down. Yeah, it's starting to come together. And at this point, it's just about getting the structure together. I'm very pleased that it's holding itself very well at the moment. Fingers crossed it will continue to do so. And that's one of the joys of actually doing it as a coil. It becomes much stronger than if you, say, rolled out a sausage. Or even if you did it as a slab. Okay. 
Hej. have a head attached to a neck. Always good. Now I'm going to start doing work on it. Again, at the moment it looks like he's being attacked by a rather large snake. I want to get some ears on, hopefully that will fix that look. I've got to be careful that this doesn't weigh the, the head down too much. It should actually almost hold itself without ideally without almost without putting any pressure on that baby's head at all otherwise the whole baby's head is going to start to buckle as well asking a bit too much of it right so let's add some ears and you see now why i wasn't too worried about the baby's ossicones because i'm pretty much going to be covered by the head of his mum. Okay, so I'm working this into a sausage. It's about the same thickness from end to end. Cut it in half. Shape it into an ear. Now that mother's ears, well, and the adult's ears generally, little bit more flexible they often have them a little bit more further forward so they're still on the side but perhaps a little bit more alert so a bit more sort of like that after all she's got a new baby she wants to keep her safe or him safe Look at that I always think it's what a difference it makes when you start to put ears onto something. Suddenly it starts to look a little bit more like what you had in mind. And a bit less, less like some sort of random contemporary sculpture. Difficult thing now is not to, be, uh, not to put too much pressure on it because again I don't want her pressing down on the head of the calf while I'm doing this. And the clay has a tendency to do that. Just smoothing in the ears at the back, making sure they're not going to fall off. Holding her neck steady again. Partly to brace it so it doesn't take too much stress at this point. Possibly start to crack, but also to protect the baby. thing I'm going to add now is I am going to add her Aussie cones. So the females, the um, Aussie cones are slightly smaller than the males. They're also tufted on the top, which is one easy way to tell a male giraffe from a female giraffe. If I cut that in half there, is that going to be too small? Be enough. Let's have a look. Fall forward there. And there. Yeah, I think that'll do it. So let's scrape them up. Put them on. It's starting now to look a little bit more like a giraffe. A bit less like the baby's being attacked by a malevolent snake. On. Now again, if you want to cheat, you don't necessarily do... have to do eyes. You can again, you can just do them shut. Like she's uh, so peaceful with her baby, just sleeping with her calf. Yeah, 
pressing there. She's pressing down on the baby again. I can see baby's, baby's feeling the pressure start to slump. Just a little bit too much. Bring her up. up. Okay. Right, I am going to give baby some uh, tiny little ones on the back of his head. Again, if you like the idea of being sort of contemporary and modern and um, cheating a lot, of course, just don't put any face features on and you can just go with that sort of the whole gentle form and you can say, well, that's, that's always the plan. You know, it's, it's, the, it's the essence of a giraffe rather than the physical uh, entity of it. You can get away with anything if you say things like that. People believe you. I know, I did a course in contemporary art. One of the major elements we had to do is how to write bullshit. Uh, when. And they didn't call it that, obviously, but that's basically what it was. And we're displaying our artwork. Uh, how to write write ups which make people go, oh wow, that's very profound. on the back. So next I'm now going to give us some eyes. Exactly, Katie. <laughs> and I say the other way is to just, you know, have closed lids like that. In fact, that's quite neat. I might go with that. And just give her some nostrils. Give him some nostrils. And some eyes. And you could get away with that. I mean, let's face it. Bring it a bit closer so you can see it, but you know, you know, with the eyes, just just little slits like that, you know, mother and baby quietly napping together. You could get away with that, I'm sure. However, if you didn't want to, if you want her eyes to be open, I'm, I'm continually having to try and persuade her not to put wear her baby down here. The um, course I did, Katie, was titled. Um, Contemporary Art and Professional Studies, which I always jokingly said was actually how to be an artist and possibly not starve while you're doing it. There was quite a bit of a business element to the degree as well as the art side of it. Trying to turn out artists who could actually make a living as artists rather than just leaving university and ending up working in a McDonald's. Okay, right, so if we want eyes, make a pair of eyeballs. And hollow in where the eye socket would be. And there. And there. And in spinning it round, I've managed to lose an eyeball. Ah, there it is. Okay. Never a good plan. Okay, so insert an eyeball. That needs to be bigger. Typical. Let's do that again. Yes, it did. It was a very good degree, I have to say. I got 
a first for my degree and I think partly because I wrote such a good business plan it was 60 pages long I'm not even sure I think they just gave it to me just so that I didn't feel I needed to come back and do it again when they gave them the results they're not going to sit and read that blooming thing As always, put the lower lid in first. Just slip on it. Put it in under there. Like that. Repeat on the other side. Yeah, so many kids, you know, study art and never never do anything with it because they're just not taught how to do anything with it okay. right now for the upper lid the eye too much because as Janice has said they do have lovely eyes they also have lovely eyelashes but I don't know that I'm going to be doing them on this one okay and now I'm just going to work that in as usual so starting with the bottom lid smoothing it in trying not to interfere too much with the part that goes against the eye and then around the top trying not to do what I've just done which is stick my finger in his other eye hopefully I haven't done too much damage we're going to find out in a moment I want to I do want to build up over that eye a little bit more. Because their eyes, as I pointed out before, um, come out and then sort of go in at an angle like that and the eyes in that part. Whereas at the moment my eyes are curved round, so I need to fill that out a bit, make it a little bit more realistic. each time trying to make sure I don't let her press down onto the baby giraffes are one of those animals that as long as you're vaguely in the right direction as in the head doesn't look too much out of shape and the neck is long that people will know what you're making okay and then again same here you can see I need to build that up over the top of the eye there. Make sure she's not pressing down on the baby while I do this. Squash the baby. Yeah. Bit 
a shape. I'm not going to mess around with this skull a little too much, but I do need to add the lump, which I pointed out earlier, that's at the end of that ridge, there's a lump there. On some species of giraffe it's really pronounced, um, and I can't remember which species it is that actually is also nicknamed as the three-horned giraffe, because it is so pronounced. such a huge lump more like that so, up on the other side okay. we'll do it for the moment next thing I want now uh, is I'm just going to try and smooth out the neck a little bit before I put the mane on so, at this point I'm also looking for weak points and you can see probably if I put that in profile there's a bit of a dip there where the coils haven't gone quite right so I'm going to add in a bit more there that will also help to strengthen the neck of course so a bit of slip there giraffes are always one of the really tricky things when I get especially when I get kids groups and they go I want to make a giraffe you sort of it's it's like when I was saying about when we're doing the elephants it's one of those things that make your heart sink and it's like okay and then you sort of say, you don't mind if it's lying down, do you? Because there's just those lovely, long, spindly legs that are just a catastrophe to try and work with. And if you look at the pictures that I sent you, only one of them has got the giraffe standing up. And if you look closely at it, you'll see that what the artist has done is actually sort of given a, a huge rock behind the giraffe, which the giraffe is actually leaning on. So the legs are holding very little weight most of the weight is on that piece at the back that's actually quite a big sculpture that one it's in bronze and it's um i don't think it's quite life-size but it's certainly uh, a fairly hefty piece of work okay there we go getting quite a nice curve now on the neck a bit better shape so now what i'm going to do so i'm still worried about what she's doing to this poor baby is now put the mane on. So, a little piece of clay, and I'm going to make a sausage. Okay, and then from the top of the neck flowing down. I'm going to have it like that. That again will also help to accentuate the, the whole curve of the thing. This whole f fluid motion, which is one of the things that's really quite attractive about this particular pose. So, that one there. Make sure you start with it straight between the ears. And then it's going to come down with a bit of a twist. Let's say it's there. So that when, when you're looking at it from the front or from that sort of angle, you will still be able to see the mane. Stick it down again, trying to protect the baby here all the time. <laughs> so I don't press her flat, him flat. I'm not sure what sex this baby is. And work that in. One way. side and all the way on the other side fingers off. Yeah, okay. I'm doing the 
just. Okay, so now let's smooth that down a little bit before we rough it up. We just want where it joins the, the back of the neck to be smooth. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go along and give it a bit of rough it up a bit. So I'm really, really happy with her. Now I'm going to go back to working on the baby a bit. I'm not really happy about his head now. Now I've got hers looking better. I still like the idea of having the eyes shut, I think. But at the moment, if you look at it, it looks a little bit more like a lamb rather than a, a giraffe. So we need to do that bit of shaping. We need to get that groove in a little bit more defined. There. Get that nose a little bit thinner and more pointy like that and that's a little bit more better a bit more like camel like and a bit less sheep like and so it's now trickier because her head's in the way to get a little bit better if we put some nostrils on now see what it looks like Not entirely happy with the pose, so I think oh, what I'm going to do <laughs> um, it doesn't surprise me, I've done it all my life. I didn't know I was doing it on camera. <laughs> but yes, I'm not entirely happy with the position of the head. I feel it needs to be a little bit more into the mum, a little bit more curved. Again, giving that sort of that shape, a little bit more sort of hearty shape, but a little bit more submissive almost to mum. So a bit more like that maybe that's better okay and then i need to put a mane on the back of the baby i'm going to be very self-conscious about that now Down. I'm going to need two pieces, but that's okay. Put one to there. That's stuck on. side your baby's head down too much. That's better. Right. There we go. Pretty much finished, I think. Apart from just tidying up. Two things I do need to do, though. Uh, one is I need to make sure that when I'm at some point, probably not right at this moment because it's too soft to pick up, that I put a hole in. So as was mentioned earlier, I need it to be hollow underneath. So I'm going to need to lift it up. Yeah, it's stuck the board. Let's see if I'm feeling brave enough and put a hole through. I'm not brave enough. That's going back down again. Put a hole through into the neck on both sides so that it can vent. 
I quite like the sort of the real roughness of this, the real raw build of it in a way that I've got here. Um, and I'm sort of half tempted, only half tempted, to leave that fairly rough. Um, come on, stop doing that to your baby. <laughs> yeah, a bit more like that. And let's say, especially around the head here, where it's very sort of co very rough and coarse, it's actually quite nice. So I don't know whether to actually leave it like that or to uh, work it a little bit more, but I might do a little bit more with the shaping. And I'll put some pictures up when I'm done. I keep squashing poor baby's head into the wrong shape. Definitely, I think I need to take some weight out of the, ne the baby's neck here. It's gone um, very thin here, but much thicker here. And I want it a little bit thinner all the way. So a little bit more sort of fiddling around to do with it, just to get it exactly as I want. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with her. So I look forward to seeing how you get on with doing a similar build. Um, and if you manage to make it bigger than mine, I'd be well impressed because, as I say, that's I never managed to get anything bigger than about that. What's that about nine inches? The hair I did, uh, which topped out, I think, in the end at 11 inches, is probably one of the biggest things I've done. Um, I just don't make big things, I just don't seem to be able to. So, if you manage it, good luck. Uh, if you do go for a really big version, so anything of a, about bigger than that, you're probably going to need to. Um, use a different clay, use something like a crank, something that's got a bit more grog in it to be able to hold it, otherwise you're going to have problems with it flopping and, and collapsing on itself. But I shall put up some more pictures, especially when I've got it finished, so you can have a good look at it, and um, we'll um, do something else on Friday. Cheers.